Hey, how's it going? So, I'm actually using a different camera angle now. Um, it's a little easier for me to speak into the microphone, which is really sensitive, and then talk into the camera if I set it up this way, I think. So we're gonna test it out for now. Um, you get to see a little bit of other things, like my big Mr. Saturn over there and the scary Donkey Kong up there. Um, but yeah, today I wanted to do something a little different. Uh, not different for YouTubers, because I think everybody makes this video. But I haven't had a chance to do so. I wanted to talk about my pre-orders for 2022. And there's only really like one into 2023, so nearly this is the 2022 video. I haven't really ordered that much. Um, maybe compared to some other people, this might not seem like a lot, but we got shelf space to worry about. Money, of course, is always an issue. Shipping prices are always going up. I'm just a very selective person, and I gotta worry about other things. Excuses aside though, let's just start talking about the figures. I'm gonna be starting off with April, and then moving on into December. And our first figure is May. Not the month, May from Pokemon, uh, Ruby and Sapphire. This is probably my least, like, interesting figure I have coming in. It's just a Pokemon figure. I don't think many people are really concerned about how, like, overly detailed the Pokemon line from Kotobukiya is. You're really just pre-ordering them because you like the characters. And it's not like these Pokemon designs are ever, like, overly detailed or have tons of shading and coloring. They're always very simple. And I think that's good. I think that makes sense. And I think that's what is appealing about them. It can appeal to anybody because of how simple and easy to remember they are. I have no interest in collecting them all. I know that they're going to skyrocket in price, but that doesn't really concern me. I just want to get the ones that I really like. And, you know, May is one of the characters that I definitely have some kind of, like, nostalgia for. Just like her character design, Ruby and Sapphire are also good games. There's not really that much to say about this figure either. It's very simple. There's, like, no shading in the figure, right? I know this. It's a cheap figure for a reason. But I still think it's something that anyone who likes Pokemon might be interested in, and a lot of you probably do have this ordered. But yeah, either way, I'm excited to get her. She should be coming in next month. But moving on into June, we have Reese or Rise, or however you say her name, from Trials of Mana. So Trials of Mana was an SNES game, right? It came out over in Japan, we never got it, but a few years ago they did re-release it for Americans and everybody else. They fully translated it, and then they also remade it. Um, I have not played the original, but I did play through the remake the whole thing. thought it was a great game, it was like an 8 out of 10. You know, not super impressive, but very fun. Felt very nostalgic going through that game. As someone who likes video game characters, and as someone who likes to collect video game character figures, this one just immediately appealed to me. I definitely love a lot about it, just like her outfit in general, the overall color scheme. I really like the green of this figure. I don't really have a lot of green figures in my collection now that I think about it. Um, but the shading looks expertly done here. Um, her hair looks beautiful as well. There's really a lot to like about this one. But I will say there was one other reason why I ordered this, and that's because of another character in the game, Angela. Now, if you ever play Trials of Mana, there's six characters or so that you could play in the game, and they all have their different stories. They all have their own movesets and their own things about them. Um, Angela's my favorite character. I think her design and her character herself is just much more interesting than Rhea's. And I'm hoping if this figure sells well, they'll make one of Angela. Now, that's probably not going to happen, so I won't be upset if it doesn't. But I'm going to do my part. I'm going to pre-order this one. I like it anyway, right? I do think it does look very pretty. Um, everything about it does look good to me. I don't think there's anything wrong with this, and I think Flair is going to do a great job with it. But, you know, if I can get something out of it as well, by doing so, I'm gonna try. So, that's the story. I'm kinda hoping that they make an Angela to go with this. I will day one pre-order that if it happens. But for now, I am still looking forward to Rees. Alright, let's move on because I ramble way too much. Melia from Xenoblade Chronicles is my next figure. I believe she comes out in July. And, you know, when I pre-ordered this figure, it was a bit of, like, a safety net thing. I hadn't played the game yet, but I did like how this character looked. So, I kinda just wanted to make sure I can get it in case I liked her in the end. And you know, I played through Xenoblade Chronicles that year, and wouldn't you know it, it became one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. Genuinely, I think this is one game that like everybody should play. It is so good. I could ramble on and on and on about that, but I'm already really bad at just making stupid tangents. So, let's just talk about the figure, right? I'm really glad they're making this. You know, they really did a great job with Pyra and Mithra. Those two figures look amazing. I'm sure many of you have them or have seen them, and I can tell that the quality is still carrying over into Melia, right? Like, her outfit isn't as vibrant as those two, I get that, but there is just as much love and care put into this figure as those two. 
I really do love her hair, just like the way it curls into itself. It looks really nice on this figure. And then the wings on her head just look like they have been expertly sculpted. There are just so many details etched into them that they just look fantastic. And even her staff, right, which is obviously not as, like, crazily sculpted as the swords on Pyra and Mithra. That still looks good as well. I don't know if I really like the base, though. I don't know if putting her on, like, a grassy field was the best play. It's not gonna really match with the other ones. Especially moving forward where there's another Xenoblade girl coming in this video. But everything else about this figure looks great. Um, I would have preferred it if they put her in the normal outfit. Um, I definitely just prefer the way she normally looked in the game. But for what this is, I still think she looks pretty stunning. There's a lot of cool things about this figure. And I think it will look good with them and the, uh, the Cosmos or the Cosmos when it uh, is all put together. You have them all in your set. And maybe if you get Nia, she'll also look good with them. Maybe for Xenoblade 3, it'll look even better. But I don't know the story of that game yet, so who knows. Um, but yeah, this figure looks great. Looking forward to this one a lot. I hope it's not too delayed from the Good Smell Company US site. Maybe I'll even look for one from Japan, just in case I really want it sooner. I don't know if I'm going to be that, like, anxious for it, but we'll see. Okay, moving on to September now with Mona from Genshin Impact. Now, I don't think this figure needs an introduction. So many people have pre-ordered this. I think there's like 2,000 entries on MFC alone, which is a lot for that website. Now, I've never played Genshin Impact. I don't really plan to do so. I just don't really have an interest in gacha games. I just like Mona. I just like all the artwork I've seen. I think the in-game model is cute too, and I think it translates really well into a great looking figure. Me buying this figure is purely off of like aesthetic alone. I just like how this figure looks. I just like the color scheme. I like the big funny hat. I love how the stocking kind of goes from brown to like this really rich purple gradient. And I guess I do have to admit because this is probably a reason why some people ordered this alone. Her butt does look good. They did a great job with it. And even though they kind of like twisted her body to make sure you could see it, and it's a bit of an unnatural pose in a way, it looks good. So yeah, that's Mona. That's my fourth figure. It's a bit of a bandwagon, but I don't really care. I like it. So October is going to be really cheap for me because the only thing I pre-ordered from that month was Pecora, the Pecora Nendoroid. Now, I was a little upset that the Figma ended up having a bit more accessories, mainly in the bazooka. But, you know, a little bit of complaints aside, I do think this is a really cute Nendoroid. I have nothing to really complain about. Um, it looks great. It's going to come out great. There's not really too much to worry about when it comes to Nendoroids, right? It's really rare for a Nendoroid to come out not looking like the promotional images. And since I think all of the promotional images look good, this is going to be exciting, right? All of her faceplates are cute. All of the accessories she does come with are pretty good. Really, it is a good Nendoroid, and I don't really have much concerns about it. I'm just being a nitpicker. It's whatever, right? This one looks great. I'm excited. And then in November, we have the Shuten Doji from Q's Q. This is their second Shuten Doji. Um, I have the first one, and it's among one of my favorite figures. I don't think a lot of people ordered this one. Um, I'm pretty sure it does have a decent amount of appeal. But Shuten Doji in, like, this Chinese vampire, like, zombie outfit. Um, it's very unique, right? And I just like this kind of outfit. I like the Chinese vampire thing. Uh, one of my favorite characters in, like, video games is Shenko. Uh, whenever I play Vampire Savior, I have to pick her. She's like my favorite character. I even played her in NBC3 when she was like complete shit. But, you know, that being said, uh, I think this costume looks fantastic on this character. Um, it's really attractive to me. I really like just like the overall color scheme of this one. Her really like pure white slender legs against the black draping dress and the all the red throughout the outfit looks really good as well. Um, I can't say I know exactly what those popsicle sticks are behind her. Um, or like the quill on her hat, but you know, I think it looks good. It's a really interesting looking figure that doesn't really kind of match too much with anything I have besides maybe some like Toho Vania stuff if you know those figures, but I think it looks cool. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about is her fingernails. They're very long and I feel like if you drop this figure one time, they're gonna break. So you gotta be really careful if you pre-order this. Q's Q is making a third shoot and doji, I believe, which um, is probably gonna be better than this one. But I don't really care. I already have the first one, so technically I didn't need this one either. But this is my favorite character from Fate Go. I just love her design. And if that one's good too, I'm gonna get it. But I am excited for this one. It's probably gonna get delayed a lot, so this will probably end up in like a 2023 video if I make that as well. So we'll see. But yeah, this one is really unique. Um, I wish more people kind of cared about it because it seems like it's not super popular. It's still shooting doji. It's still Fate Go. I'm sure it'll sell well. Uh, for me, though, it's definitely one of my most anticipated. So December actually has three figures. Can you believe it? I have more than one thing in a month. That's crazy. 
Now, I'm gonna talk about the first one here that has been a bit of a thorn in my side, um, and that's Reimu from Toho. Uh, I've always wanted a Reimu figure. Uh, I really like those games, but I never had a Reimu. I have a Marissa and a few other characters like Romelia and Sakuya and Flandre, but I feel like you need a Reimu, right? And this one looks fantastic to me, and I can get to that in a second, but this figure went up for pre-order in like July 2020. That was a long time ago, and you know we're in 2022 now, so I pre-ordered this late. I pre-ordered it after like the pre-orders were done all the way in 2021, when it was about to come out in like September, and then it kept getting pushed back to October and November, and then we got a final update in December, I think, or maybe it was in November, but either way, we got an update that it was coming out in December of 2022. So this got delayed like a whole year after waiting a year for it to come out, which is just insane. They pretty much gave an update where they're like, yeah, we didn't really do anything. Like the production's just screwed on this one. You're fucked. It's just like, okay, <laughs> but like what happened? Like, how did this go so wrong? And that sucks, right? Um, this is definitely the best Reimu I've seen. It was a juggle between this one and Q's Q's like Tohovania one, if you've seen that one. But that has been in production for like six years now or something. It just won't come out. It's been like a great prototype for so long that I've just kind of given up on it. And I decided to pre-order this one instead. Um, I just think this figure looks outstanding, right? It is a really dynamic figure with a ton of colors. And I think the colors are specifically why I like this one. It's not overdone with like the effect parts, but they all are just like different colors of the rainbow. You got like blue, green, purple, pink, red. There's just like all of these colors all around her. And then she's got these like giant sleeves kind of just like blowing in the wind. The ribbons on her like sleeves kind of turn into this like translucent plastic at the tips. You, you just look at this figure and you see more and more details in it. It looks expertly sculpted and I'm really happy as a Toho fan, as a Reimu fan, that this is coming out. Just a shame I had to wait so long and who knows if it'll even be done by the end of the year. I'm kind of worried about it. It seems like they just didn't know what to do with this one so I hope there's no issues by the time this comes out. So next up for December is Ryza from Atelier Ryza. This is the Max Factory one, the one where there's like a diorama around her and she's sitting down, there's like a bird on her shoulder and I think she's putting on her shoes, right? I think this figure looks beautiful. This is gonna be one of my favorite figures when I get it. Um, I still haven't played a Ryza game yet. I do have both of them. I just haven't started them yet and I will get around to it. But I think a lot of people are just fans of this character, like, regardless of if they like the game or not. It's just one of those, like, outstanding character designs that just appeal to everybody, right? Obviously, she's kind of like the thick queen right now. And this figure does represent that really well. Her thighs are really thick in this figure. Um, but even besides that, right, there's just so many details in this figure. And I really, really love the base about this one. The base itself, on top of the fact that this looks like one of the most accurate looking rises to me, is what sold me on this figure. Uh, but I'm really excited about this one. I think it's gonna turn out like great. I think this will be one of the rises that most people will want in their collection by the end of it all. But you know, there's always more being made. This might not be the best one, but you know, for me right now, I think it is. So I'm definitely happy about this pre-order. And my final figure for December, which is one I didn't really expect I'd be pre-ordering, it's the Radio Eva Part 2 Asuka figure. Now, when I saw this, I kind of was just keeping an eye on it for a friend. I knew he really liked Asuka, and maybe he wanted a figure of her. Um, he's not really a collector, but I decided to like, you know, just kind of show him when this came out. And I don't know if he even pre-ordered it, but I kept looking at this thing, and I'm like, wow, I really like this. I just like the street attire on this character. And I think this figure alone is kind of selling me on streetwear for anime characters. I think that's kind of cool. And it's not something that I see too often, though it's definitely becoming more of a trend, right? Um, you know, there's a lot of figures where you put characters in bunny suits, and Chinese dresses, and it's like, yeah, it's fine, that's cute, and sometimes sexy, but I think there's something of a different appeal to putting a character in streetwear. It just looks cooler, right? At least to me. I think this figure just looks really cool. Um, and I like her face a lot. I think just overall, all the details of this one look fantastic, and they really don't have much to complain about. It wasn't too expensive, and, you know, I'm not even the biggest fan of Eva, but I will say Asuka is my favorite girl in the show. Um... You know, maybe I'll get another figure like Rey in this line. I don't really know yet. Uh, depends on how good it looks. But right now, this one sold me. I, I just kept looking at it. I just had to get it. I don't know. If you keep coming back to a figure page, you know you want it, right? You don't have to lie to yourself. Just go with your heart and do what you want, right? So yeah, that's December. And my last figure, which is coming out in June of 2023, is Nia. I've talked about this one before in my last video as well. 
This figure looks fantastic. I think this will be in my top five figures when I finally get it. Um, I like Xenoblade 2, but not as much as Xenoblade 1. But Nia is such a great character, and I love her outfit. I love, honestly, I like both of her outfits, whether she's, you know, in this one or the normal one. But of course, they were going to go with this one. It's much more, like, stunning and beautiful when you get it, like, sculpted into a figure. And I think they did a fantastic job, right? The coloring, the sword, the sculpt of the hair, and the outfit itself. It just looks beautiful. Like, I don't really know what else to say besides that. It's stunning to me, and I just really, really like it. It's a bit of a shame that it costs, like, $50 more than the other ones. But, I mean, I can see why. There's a lot more hair, and, like, the outfit is a bit more detailed as well. Um, the only bad thing about this figure is the base. I think the base is really ugly, but... What are you going to do about it, right? Like, if everything else looks good about it, and just the base is kind of bad, you could just put something on it. I don't know, you could hide the base, obscure it if you really want to. But, yeah, I like this one a lot. I, I mean, I love this one. Honestly, this one is going to be one of my favorite figures ever, probably. As long as I don't mess it up, this is definitely going to be one of my favorites. Alright, so before I end the video, I want to talk about a few more figures. The maybe figures. Figures that I kind of want to pre-order, but haven't pulled the trigger yet. And I'm going to go in order from, like, most likely to pre-order to least likely to pre-order, okay? So let's just jump into the first one, which is Minato Aqua from Hololive. Again, this was a figure I like just talked about, so I'll keep it brief. This figure is so cute. I can't get over it. I keep looking at it. The only reason I haven't pre-ordered it is because I'm scared of shipping prices. I just feel like this one's gonna cost a lot to ship. I don't really know exactly why. It just kind of looks like it's gonna be really heavy. Um, and I don't know, like figure prices for shipping are just kind of going up and up and up and I'm just a bit worried, like, I don't know how much I'm gonna actually want to spend on this one. But I really do think everything from, like, the outfit to her face to her hair, they're just so cute. And I just, I don't know, keep looking at it. So I think this will be pre-ordered at some point, I just have to find the right place to do it. Next up is Roxy from Ushoku Tensei, and, you know, again, just like Aqua, I feel like this one is gonna cost a lot to ship. And I don't know if it's gonna be worth it at that point. Um, you know, Prisma Wing is a new studio, I don't know if I want to be the guinea pig for that, but... From what I'm seeing, this figure looks great. I think this is like the most accurate looking Roxy so far, just from the face, right? The face is the most important thing in a figure for me. If they don't nail that, then it's just not gonna look like her. But I think this one looks exactly like the show to me, and that's why I like it. You know, on top of the fact that it's like a really dynamic figure as well, you got this huge swirling water that's kind of just like keeping the figure up. And she's in this like witch pose, which is, you know, a little weird. I don't think we've ever seen her fly around, but I don't really want to get concerned about stuff like that. I think this figure looks fantastic as well. But it just might cost too much. I don't know. That That's really what keeps me from ordering everything I like. It just might cost too much. And, you know, figures are getting really expensive. So it's not just something I can kind of just not think about. It is a concern. So by the time I'm making this video, this figure, this Black Rock Shooter HXXG is already like not available for pre-order anymore. You could probably pre-order it from like other sites, but Good Smile has closed it and they're the only place you're getting this for like an affordable shipping price. Now, the reason I didn't pre-order this is because I kept thinking about it and I just wasn't in love with it. I don't know, there was just something about it that kept rubbing me the wrong way. It's like a nine out of 10, but then like the one thing I don't like about it is just dragging it down and for the price of like almost 30,000 yen I just don't know if I could like bite the bullet on that one um there was also the fact that there were like promotional images for it right and they look great but then if you looked at real images of it at like promotional shows or whatever um there was an acrylic stand that kept her leg up and that was just nowhere to be seen and it's like really big too so it's kind of like a bit of a false advertising like show me that that is what I'm pre-ordering don't just lie to me and then tell me oh by the way you have to put this giant beam to hold your figure up which is like I mean I get it I don't want it to break but just don't lie about it you know what I mean just don't tell me something that's not true um between this one and the one that's coming out kind of soon the um inexhaustible version I don't know which one I like more I'm kind of leaning towards the inexhaustible because I like the way she actually looks more but it's gonna be so big like I'm worried about shipping prices this thing is going to cost a fortune to ship probably and um I don't really know if I'm going to want it at that point. So these are going to be left up in the air. Like maybe I'll pre-order them or maybe I'll buy them when they're out, depending on how much they cost to ship and if I can get it from the right place. Uh, but I'll only get one of them. If I get one of them, the other one will definitely not be ordered. I don't like Blackrock that much to get every Blackrock shooter that looks cool because they all kind of look cool. You know what I mean? They're always like nice looking figures, but I just can't really choose which one I like right now, but at least... The inexhaustible one is coming out kind of soon unless it gets delayed, so we'll hopefully find out soon just how much of a behemoth it actually is. 
Lena Bell Roll. I've been thinking about this one for a few months. Um, it would probably be my first like truly lewd inappropriate figure because it's actually a cast off. Now, I don't like it because it's a cast off. I just like the artwork. I like Michihasu. I've always liked his character designs and I think this figure is capturing that extremely well. Yeah, you could take off her chest and put on like one that actually has nipples on it. So what, right? It also has a swappable face. I just think the overall aesthetic of this one looks fantastic. I love the color scheme. I just think it looks adorable. Um, you know, huge chest aside, which is a plus to me, but like, you know, I, I just think it looks really good. Um, the only problem is that it's kind of expensive at like 22 something yen, 22,000 yen. Um, and the discounts only bring it down a little bit. Um, so I'm not really sure. I think it's gonna cost like somewhere between 200 and 250 dollars to buy this. And I don't know if it's worth it at that point. Um, but I do think this one looks really great. Um, I don't have a wing figure either, so this would be my first wing figure as well. Which is kind of interesting to me, it kind of makes me want to buy it more actually, to kind of just get the opinion of wing from like myself instead of others that tell me like, yeah, they're pretty good, or yeah, they're alright. Like, I don't really know, so um, I might, I might get this one, but I don't know, I don't really know yet. Um, I can't obviously show you all the pictures because um, actually they don't show any nipples in any of the pictures, but they are there, so. Whatever. Anyway, yeah, that's Michihasu's um, Lena Bell roll. I think it looks great. Um, I kind of want it. I might get it. It comes out kind of soon in May. It got delayed a couple of months, so I think this was the last time it'll get delayed. So I guess if I buy it, you'll know pretty soon. All right, I'm throwing this one in there, Doom Guy, uh, the Figma. Now, I haven't bought a Figma in a while, but as far as Figma goes, this one looks like one of the best in a while. I think this Figma looks fantastic. It just comes with so much, right? And it's only about $100 um, if we do like a one-to-one -one conversion, which is a lot, right? It's a Figma and they're only gonna be like six to seven inches tall. But if we look at Doom Guy or Doom Slayer or whatever you wanna call him, he has so many details in his outfit. There's just like so many little bits of extra plastic they had to sculpt into that thing. It comes with these like four weapons that all look huge and a bunch of hands and they can't mess up his face because he's in a helmet. So. It just looks really cool, right? If I bought this, it would be because I love the Doom games. Um, I've played most of them, like Doom 1, 2, 64, and 2016. I haven't played 3, and I haven't played the Eternal yet, because my PC was so bad I couldn't run it. Um, now I have a new PC, so I should do that soon. Um, but yeah, I've been thinking about this one too, and it's not too expensive, and it also comes out in May. If I can get this for a good price, or maybe the shipping isn't too much, then yeah, maybe I'll get it. Um, I certainly like it, and I think it is one of the cooler Figma I've seen in a while. So yeah. Corone from Spirit Tail. Uh, I've talked about Spirit Tail before. I don't like Spirit Tail. Um, I'm just kind of hoping this one turns out good. I didn't have it in me to pre-order this because I didn't like what I've seen from Spirit Tail before. Like, as much as I like this character, I don't think it's worth like $200 if the company isn't impressing you with their previous work. So I'm gonna let others, you know, kind of decide for me if this is good or not. Uh, I'll wait for the pictures. Maybe it'll be hard to get it, right? Like, I don't know. I'm assuming VTuber stuff will sell out if it's good, but that's not really that big of a deal for me. If I don't get this one, then there'll be plenty of others in the future, right? There's gonna be so many more of Corone and other characters, because unless they, like, just stop streaming, they just make too much money. So, like, why would they stop? You know what I mean? Like, they're gonna keep making more. They're even making a Nender right now, so in the end, if I don't get this, I could just get that, you know what I mean? Like, I'll get something of this character, because I do like her. But the figure does look cute, right? I think overall the prototype does look cute and I love all the little bread around it. That's a really fun detail for a figure to have. I just don't know if it's gonna turn out that well. So yeah, I'm not gonna pre-order it, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, that's everything I was thinking about pre-ordering. That was everything I did pre-order. And hopefully this video was entertaining in some way. Maybe I showed you something you didn't know existed and you pre-ordered it yourself. Let me know if you, uh, you know, have any of these on pre-order as well. Let me know if, like, your most anticipated pre-order. I don't really know what else to, like, say here. Just leave me a comment. I'll read it. I'll respond to you. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Like the video if you enjoyed it. And, you know, subscribe for more if you want to see more videos about figurines and stuff. Until next time, I'll see you later. Take care.